everyone, it's Amelia back again with Sarah for this week's video and we're in Coral Echo. We're still in phase one here in Fortaventura, so if you missed last week's video and you're not sure what that involves, you can go back and watch that one and see what most of the main rules are. We've only had a couple of minor updates which I can mention in this video. But as we're free to move around the province for the purpose of going to a shop or visiting a bar or a friend's house, we've been able to drive up north to Coral Echo today. It's never um, been so easy to park here. Yeah, there is so much parking. There's a few people around. Um, but obviously not as many as usual and um, we just thought we'd do this section of what I, I always refer to as the main strip but I guess it's just the main street in Coral Echo here where most of the shops, bars, restaurants are. This is Las Palmeras, the shopping centre. Um, I'll have a quick look over here but it seems as if that's all taped off yeah so you can I don't know if you can make out this but there's all um, tape stopping people going in there but there is um, there is still access to the supermarket but all of these are closed um, and yeah there's uh, things across here stopping people going in. As I said in last week's video, shops um, under 400 square metres were allowed to open as of last week. They actually added an addendum to that a few days ago, so shops that are larger than 400 square metres can also open, provided that they section off some of the areas so that they're not too big and it doesn't attract too many people at a time. Um, but you can see here that all of these shops are closed. So another new rule that we've woken up to this morning is an update to the decree which says that as of tomorrow if you are in a public space or an enclosed public space, so indoors or outdoors, if you can't maintain a two metre physical distance from somebody else then you have to wear a mask um, so this is quite a new thing isn't it yeah and um, up till now we, I mean we haven't been wearing masks because it's only been mandatory on public transport which we don't use but plus I, d I haven't seen masks available anywhere certainly not in any of the supermarkets so we're, there's a pharmacy just here so we're going to go and see if we can purchase some from the pharmacy. good thing here in Spain is that they are regulating the price of the disposable surgical masks. Um, so the pharmacies, the supermarkets, the most that they can sell them for is 96 cents per mask. Um, and this was the first pharmacy that we tried to go in and it was pretty easy wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, we just went in, asked him if he had any masks, he said yeah how many do you want? <laughs> do you want to wear them now? Yeah. Um, and they were nice scents each. So um, because we're not wearing them now, we've, we've got them in a bag, so we're going to keep these nice and clean. Um, we don't anticipate here in Fortaventura that this is going to be a big issue for us because it's pretty easy for us to maintain a two metre di distance at all times anyway. So we think really this will probably be in places like supermarkets, the post office, um, places like that where they may start to ask um, that you have a mask. So we're going to keep these in the car and then if we go somewhere we've got one at the ready. So much like the other videos that I've made so far, this is really just to share our experience during the de-escalation of lockdown. Um, and I've had so many great comments, um, questions from people. We, we did have some questions for this week's video, so stay tuned to the end for those and we'll, we'll cover off what we can. Um, but it's really just to show you how well things are progressing here, what the de-escalation looks like. Um, and we're going to try, obviously, to cover different areas as well, just so that you get a feel for what it's like across the island. 
Um, so if there's somewhere specifically that you'd like to see, um, drop it in the comments below on YouTube and we'll um, have a look through before we decide where to go for next week's. So we heard yesterday, I think it was, that Fort Aventura have um, applied along with the rest of the Canary Islands that are still on phase one to enter phase two as of next Monday. So that needs to be approved um, via Madrid, but we're still doing very well here, so I, I don't see any reason why that won't be the case. For next week's video, hopefully whatever those changes are, we'll be able to show you as well, just so that you can see what's different. This queue of people here is waiting to uh, go into the bank. Um, so obviously those are open, but need to only let so many people in at once to maintain the distancing. And we can see that down here, there are a couple more shops open. There's this one here. There's another pharmacy as well. Um, and this is the first um, bar with a terrace area that we're coming up to now that we've seen open. Um, so yeah, we covered off all of that in last week's video if you want to see how the bars are able to open and we spoke to a bar owner in Coletta about her experience in uh, meeting all those rules and regulations. Um, just so you know as well from speaking to her, the police are going round checking that bar owners are being compliant. Um, she did have a visit and all was good, which was great news. Um, but certain bars haven't been so fortunate, so there was a venue here in Coraleco that was closed by the police on the first day of opening because there was too many people there. Um, so that, that is a factor as well for bar owners when they think about whether to open or not. They have to be able to make sure that they can comply with all of these regulations because the fines, if they risk breaking any of those, it's just not worth it. Interestingly, on the drive here to Coraleco, we were stopped at a checkpoint and a um, very polite policeman, but he asked us, wanted to check that we were part of the same household travelling together in a car without masks and to reinforce that obviously you're only able to move to go to a shop, a bar or to a friend's house under phase one. Um, so that was all done very politely but they are actually checking everything here there are checkpoints along the major roads just to make sure people are doing what they're supposed to be doing a few more terraces open up here along the beach at the moment with phase one you still can't use the beach hopefully that will be next week as part of phase two but there's some nice little cafe bars restaurants along this area that we've been to before um, so we're going to find one that's open and get some lunch. So it does appear, at least here in Coralaco, that the places that have chosen to open are doing a a reasonable amount of business. Most of these appear in the old town area are really quite busy which is good to see. So people enjoying a drink. And it's nice to be able to sit and have these kinds of views. So we've come to Hilda. Oh wow, <laughs> oh, wow this okay. is really good timing. <laughs> so, uh, this is why we love this place, <laughs> the tortilla. <laughs> so it's just great to be out and about again. You know, the, the lockdown here has been very, very restrictive. It still is to a certain degree. Um, but to be able to come out and safely enjoy some food and a drink, um, it's just really, really good, isn't it? Well, it's important for us as well to help kickstart these businesses because obviously they've been closed up for two months. Yeah. I mean, and, and as it is, there's no tourists, so they're, whatever they're making at the moment is limited compared to what they normally make. 
So just to support that, to help get them going a little bit, plus to give them some confidence to keep going. So we've just finished lunch at Hilda's, which was amazing, mm -hmm. really, really nice. Um, if you're in Coral Echo, highly recommend it if you're looking for somewhere. Um, lunch or dinner or drinks, really, really nice place, nice um, fresh ingredients, really lovely, friendly staff in there as well. It's nice to see more people out and about, people are looking a little bit more relaxed in, within themselves. Okay, so on last week's video we asked you if you had any questions for us and we had quite a few come in. Um, we can't answer all of them but some of them were pretty similar. Um, so what have we got? The first one is from Anthony and Sue and they want to know uh, what is the current rate of infections? Okay, so um, hi to Anthony and Sue, thank you for all your comments on the videos. Um, the current situation here is that we have two active cases, one of which is hospitalised and has been for some time, um, and we have 43 people that have recovered, so um, really, really good numbers here. Um, Paul has asked, do the Spanish authorities have any plans in place to allow internal travel around Spain to help tourist de destinations recover? Um, okay, so this is talking about domestic travel within Spain for current Spanish nationals or residents. Yeah, I think the key here in Spain at the moment is very much progression through phases of de-escalation. So everything is, it seems quite slow compared to other European countries. So we know that France and Italy are already talking about dates in terms of reopening. Um, it's always been made clear that it wouldn't be until phase three, so towards the end of June, until we'd be able to freely move around the whole area of Spain, including the mainland. So that will be the key, really, to opening up to domestic tourism. And I think we need to get to that point before we can really talk about international tourism. And we've obviously had quite a lot of questions about that, haven't we? Yeah, and we've got, we've got a holiday booked to go to Seville at the end of July and at the moment we're kind of 50-50 as to whether it's going to happen or not but based on what the government said in the last few days it looks hopeful as long as obviously this we don't know how things are going to go as long as the numbers keep going down and the situation's controlled yeah. then it should go ahead. I think that's the key as long as these phases seem to be working and there isn't any spike in the number of new infections then there's no reason why that can't happen towards the end of June. I think with our Seville trip that we've booked we had it booked already for the end of July. I think there's a very strong chance that that will happen. Um, so if that does, we'll vlog it anyway, show you what the airport experience is like and what kind of things that, that's likely to involve. So the next question is from Ross. He said, any plans to go to Corileco? So obviously, yes, that's where we've been today. Yep. And also he has a holiday booked in December and wants to know if we think that's feasible. Okay, so um, I think we just need to start off by saying we're not experts on the Royal Decree or the de-escalation plan. We're just residents here that look at it quite carefully, try and understand it. Um, we look at verified information from multiple different sources to make sure that what we're sharing is factual to the best of our knowledge. And obviously we want to make sure we follow the rules. Um, I think all we can say on this is that it's still too early to say with any degree of certainty at all when the borders will reopen um, and I know that there's a lot of stuff that's going in the media in terms of it might not happen until October, it might not be at all this year, it could be as soon as the end of June. Um, the thing is at the moment we just don't know and, and anything that you're reading um, is obviously subject to change. Um, what we do know at the moment is that the border is closed until June the 15th at the very earliest. Um, having said that, we also know that with the plan of de-escalation that Spain have said that we need to move through all four phases before they will look to allow tourists back into Spain. And we know um, on the current timetable until the end of June at the very earliest. Um, so is a holiday in December feasible? I'd really like to think so because I think if tourist destinations aren't back 
with some level of tourism by then, then they're really going to be in trouble. Um, but in terms of saying what date is it likely to happen, we just don't know. I think at the earliest it could be sometime in July, um, but I think the reality is it might be slightly later than that. That's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the, the thing to bear in mind. It, it's all kind of up in the air at the moment. We can't predict the future, any of us. So if, if numbers carry on the way that they are, which is continuing to go down, but it's also not just dependent, obviously, on what happens here, it's what happens in the UK. And again, there's positive signs in the UK in terms of the numbers at the very least slowing down. I think the UK is still behind Spain in terms of infection rates. So, yeah. um, but if things carry on going the way that they're going, I would, I would be fairly optimistic that a holiday in December would happen. But again, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, the other thing, of course, that may happen, and I'm not saying it will, um, is that it may be that the Schengen area, the flights are opened up to them first, so UK and Ireland may have to wait a few more weeks. Um, yeah, we just need to wait and see. We really don't know yet. I mean, there's a follow-up question from John, who also has a holiday booked in December uh, and he's concerned about the possibility of two weeks quarantine on arrival. Okay, so December holidays are obviously the popular time by the looks of it. Mm, bit um, of winter sun. Yeah, a good bit of winter sun. Um, okay, this quarantine um, issue, so this um, I think came up towards the end of last week. Um, so Spain introduced a 14-day compulsory um, self-quarantine um, period for anybody re-entering the country during the state of alarm. Um, so there's two things to mention with this. One, at the moment, the only people that can enter a Spanish border is a Spanish national um, or a Spanish resident. So if you have uh, a residencia green document or you're a Spanish national with a Spanish passport, if you're currently somewhere else in the world and you want to return to Spain, um, then you would be permitted entry. Um, everybody else is not allowed. Um, it is possible now to transit through Spain if you're part of, an, if you live in a certain number of EU countries that Spain have permitted, um, but even then you can't cross the border and go landside, you have to wait in the airport and transit to another flight. So in that sense the border is still closed but they are allowing indirect flights through Madrid and Barcelona. Um, so the 14 day quarantine period at the moment will only last during the period of the state of alarm. Um, so as far as we're aware by the time borders have reopened we will be out of the period of the state of alarm and it shouldn't apply to tourists. Now that's not definite, there may still be some changes to that, but that's what's actually been written into the documentation at the moment. And common sense would say that if you're going to open the border to tourists, nobody will come if they have to spend 14 days in self-isolation. It just won't work. Um, having said that, we don't know what the UK are going to do, so there is that to consider as well. Um, so your employer, so it may not be a UK regulation, but if you're due to come on holiday later in the year, your employer may ask you um, to self-isolate on return before going back to work. So it kind of falls under, again, there's lots of variables. It's probably slightly early to say at the moment, but in terms of arriving into Spain by the time the borders have opened, a 14-day period of self-isolation um, wouldn't be something that I'd be concerning yourself with at this stage. So. Thank you everybody for your questions. I just want to quickly say as well, I had a couple of comments from people that are UK residents, but they are currently stuck here in Fortaventura. Um, their flights um, keep getting cancelled because obviously the planes can't come over here to then take them back. If you're in that kind of situation, just be aware there are still ways back to the UK. Um, so there is, there are flights available from Fortaventura to Madrid with Iberia Express. And from there, you can get a direct flight Madrid through to various places in the UK, but mainly um, Heathrow. There's a daily BA Heathrow service. Um, so if, if that applies to you and you're stuck and you're worried and you need to get home, there are options. So I um, just wanted to kind of say good luck if, if you're in that position. So good luck to Colin and everybody else. Um, thanks for all your comments and we'll see you next week.